So, <laughs> without further ado, pole position the animated series. Episode 3, The Chicken Who Knew Too Much. Chicken who knew too much. That's the story of my life. There's just... For, for a preview of the episode, this just makes me ask so many more questions. Well, it's kind of that, like, kind of uh, actually Mission Impossible TV series style where they, like, show you random clips and right. let you guess what's gonna happen. <laughs> See, the thing is, is that, like, often with these sort of video game shows, they would... Like, they often would just be, like, a carbon copy of another show that fits the format close enough. And so in this I, case, it's kind of like... i Speed Racer stuff here. <laughs> and that's the funny thing, is you watch the first episode of this show, and it literally is like a beat-for-beat beat ripoff of the pilot of the first episode of Speed Racer. Because <laughs> the first episode of Speed Racer, like, even all the way ago was that, um, you know, like, the plans for the, the Mach 5 were, were like like, microscoped into the windshield. <laughs> and then in this one, it's just, oh, it's the same plants, but they're inside oh, wow, of the that cars. Is, that is an 80s haircut. <laughs> Ab- absolutely. And, like, they in they, they describe the, the animal as some sort of, like, cat-raccoon hybrid. They don't tell what you what it is, What are they doing on this though. show? I don't... There's some gene splicing going on. I'm not okay with it. Oh, somebody's playing God over here. I'm sorry, I just think of something very different when I think pole positions. <laughs> I mean, it's a, yeah, it's, it's it's an 8-bit racing game with no characters, no storyline, no nothing. They just gotta make a f- episodes out of that. Uh, fun fact, one of the talk, because, yes, first off, yes, of course the cars both talk, but... Duh. <laughs> one of the cars is voiced by one of the singers from The Temptations. Alright. So I'm like, right, you know, get your paycheck good. where you can get it, I guess. And then I'll give him credit. The At least there's sexism with blue car for boy and pink car for girl. You know, it it was a different time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'll give him credit. At least like racing has something to do with the plot of the episode. That's not. Yeah, I gotta give him props for that. <laughs> You know, it's, and then with a lot of these, it's weird that, like, lower budget shows at the time, like, it instead of feeling cheaper in a lot of these cases, it just makes the show feel about, like, five or six years older than you think it is. <laughs> that chicken is about to learn something, perhaps too much. That, that would fit with the theme of the episode. <laughs> That, that is not the voice that that man has. No, no. It's just... You know, and it's not... It's it's interesting to me because it's, like... Inherently speaking, like, from a visual perspective, there's not really anything, like, inherently wrong with this show. It's just this... I, I, just, I just still just can't Just conceptually, it. it's odd that it exists. It's just... This little kid is like, hey, you want you want to make five bucks? Sure, if it's legal. Like, <laughs> was this kid trying to, like, join the... <laughs> it's like the most, like, oh, Boy Scout nice kid possible. Like, Byron, the bad guy? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no better evil henchman name than cool Byron. Start. Oh, man, that run animation there. <laughs> just... Oh, it's DeLorean. Wheels and Roadie, I think, are the names of the cars, if I remember right. Back to the Future really influenced how we thought doors could open the, in the coolest fashion possible. I mean, even when we did, like, time travel in uh, Ninja Turtles, it was like, yeah. the, you know, it was like the flying car and the teenagers and, <laughs> and that whole thing. It's just superfluous. Well, you can tell, like, 
what the animators had to focus on as, as primary concern. <laughs> it's like, okay, the cars have to look cool. Uh, and then the characters, yeah, you can yeah, do that too. Yeah, but I mean... God, that, what is that? <laughs> I know, right? It's like the longer you look at it, the more questions you have. Was there, like, no security? Like, the kid just walked onto a live track. And just handed him a chicken and ran away. Cool it, Rody. What's it supposed to be? I think it's a chicken, Dan. A chicken. Very funny. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Some good dialogue right there. It's, yeah. It's just one of these shows I, that's in this weird in-between where I'm like... tail is what really unsettles yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> It's like this weird in-between of animation of just, like, I've, I've definitely seen worse. Yeah. <laughs> but also... It might have been Quest World from Johnny Quest. <laughs> <laughs> he and I are old friends. <laughs> and I suppose he knew you liked chicken. I don't think this is a joke, Dan. Professor Morrison must have some vital reason. Maybe it's a clue to something. Maybe. See what you can find out. And let me know. This is the Falcon 7 of, of the team. Yeah, I mean, it's... There's definitely... You can, like, go through the episodes and see kind of, like, where they borrowed what from what. What, what they borrowed from, yeah. Yeah, just, just draw a raccoon! <laughs> like, it didn't need to be some, like, abomination unto God. It just seems like a strange place to choose that they're going to go, like, creatively off the reservation. Yeah. Of all the things that they could have, like, gotten creative with. God, his run cycle is so bad. And it's just, like, I still just want to point out to this point, like, they, you know, like, the, they haven't figured out anything more going on other than just, like, why are they chasing this chicken? But they're, no, they're going full on into this. this the is chicken like, is the MacGuffin of this episode. <laughs> but, like, they don't really, like, this thing of just, like, they don't know that that's the case yet. Like, they don't know yeah. what's special about the It's like watching the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! before all of, like, the dark art stuff came in. It's just, like, everyone takes it just as seriously, but it's still just a children's card game for an episode. Well. Ooh, kind of... That was good. Oh, what's Groucho Marx doing over there? Scott, I mean, everyone's got to make a paycheck somehow. I guess so, yeah. It's not an address, it's just a list of... It's just... <laughs> <laughs> Just random things you'd find in a chicken cage. Absolutely. Oh man, George that Lucas is some... inspired wipe there. Oh, but they're going extra with it though. They got you know they got to fancy it up that was a little good. bit. That was good. Is this just Professor Morrison's room? Oh, now we wanted to you know like all of the you know the <laughs> the, the, the light sources and the you know like not just for this scene That's we cool want like window lighting there yeah yeah I'm just like like now we're gonna like try with the animation we're gonna try a little it now. bit harder. <laughs> Because of course there's an old ghost town. <laughs> I have a map of it. On thumbtack to my wall. Because, like, yeah, like at this point, it is still just a runaway chicken. Like a, to them, a normal <laughs> runaway chicken. And yet it is like... Will any chicken do? Do we have to get that chicken? <laughs> it's like we'll invest all of our spy resources into finding this chicken. Dude, that's that's kind of suspicious paying that much cash for chickens. I mean, I don't know the conversion rates going on here, so I don't know what kind of. <laughs> Back now, it's a lot of money. Because I mean, if they're egg chickens, then you know, like, then that changes the you know yeah. the, the monetary evaluations going on here. That's okay, Kuma. What does this cat coon eat? Does it eat chickens? I mean, it, it could eat anything, really. I mean, as far as I know, it's going to eat that bull for all it's I know. It's going to eat the cow. 
No, no, the bull is the natural predator of these things. You know, then I got the animation to, like, actually animate bull eyes, so instead it looks like some, like, zombified Oh, yeah, they did that. Coming forward in perspective, that would have taken more work than any of them wanted to do. Plus, like, but also, you like, you look at the anatomy of the bull, and it, like, you can kind of tell someone, like, drew a horse, and then kind of, <laughs> like, they didn't really know how to draw a bull, so they drew a horse, then just made it fast. Horse with horns on it, and uh, you're fine. <laughs> So we got the racing for the episode out of the way. Now let's get to the real plot of finding a chicken. You have a, <laughs> you have a you have a caught a chicken rock. It's like grease lightning. Yeah, I know that feeling. What is that even supposed to mean? I mean, chickens are kind of a healthy thing to eat. Depends on how you cook it, but... I guess, but, like, I don't know if that's supposed to be the main emphasis of the episode. This is a good reflection of, like, an eight-year-old's understanding of morality. Like, the bad guy will pay cash for a lot of chickens, while the good guy will, like, try to track down the, the right chicken. Good eye. Yeah, just... Cause this is like, cause the cars can drive themselves, but you never know when they are and where they aren't. So I'm like, well, then why are the kids here? <laughs> if, the, if, the, if the cars themselves can do like 90% of what's going on here. We don't even need these main characters. The car can save the day. Oh, that's a video game shot if I've ever seen one. Random oil barrels. It is not a car-based show unless there's random oil barrels to drive through. Yeah, there's just, like, nothing else going on there, so it's just like... Oh, we don't want to animate the oil. They're just slipping out. I mean, props to them for figuring out the tire tracks on that. Like, yeah. I've, I've drawn tire tracks, and it's not fun. That's fair. The end. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd season finale, I gotta say. <laughs> and we're back. The grappling hook, Rody, quick. Right. I mean, gravity has already done its thing at this point. <laughs> Yeah, and then naturally, you know, the momentum yep. of the car falling down will drag both cars off the cliff, and then... It's a really strong grappling hook. Of course it is. Yeah, so this takes about it's half an hour. the lowest grappling hook ever in animate every minute <laughs> of it. Like, I didn't realize the Hideo Kojima directed this episode. <laughs> Of course, he would direct a show about a strange oh, yeah. chicken MacGuffin with giant talking cars. Byron the bad guy has a really great fashion sense. I've got to say. Like, the pink helmet. Is, yeah, the color theory is going well for him there. Yeah. It's just... That, that didn't have wheels. I really want to His point that out. His plan didn't work as well as I thought it would. <laughs> Just goes spiraling off the cliff. It's almost like this canyon was made for this car chase. Almost. Meanwhile, in an abandoned spaghetti western set. <laughs> we only got this side. Sergio Le Leone is filming over there. We wouldn't report it to any, like, archaeological journals or anything. 
I love it, like, the animation for the character makes him sound like a Cletus and merely, you know, and instead he's just like, but actuality, through my research, I have discovered yeah, that the... Yeah, he, he's more the, the podunk Cletus, yeah. Admittedly, putting the headquarters in a jail cell might have been a poor choice. Yeah. Yeah, why do we need the <laughs> <Bye>. body? <laughs> I'm really sad to say that it's 2020 we still don't have cars that can pull this awesome stuff off. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of pri it's just a matter of priorities, I guess. Yeah. You know, we got to focus on more important things than, you know. Okay, yeah, they can like find a cure for the coronavirus. I would rather have a car that can pull out a battering ram like that. And the Temptations only have got so many years. We got to get that audio recording at least done and <laughs> Like, this is like some D&D &D shit going on right here. This, I gotta admit, this show's kind of getting weird. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing for me. It's just like the fact that this... It's not the laziness of the show that gets to me. It's the fact that they choose the strangest areas to try just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, of all the things they could have chosen for that moment, that's what it turned to be, huh? Oh, this is definitely the time to worry about entertaining a chicken. Oh yeah, like it's it's, it's an artificial <laughs> intelligence. And music. And it speaks Klingon. Oh yeah, yeah very like very clever. You know, just like I like you know my new. Uh, you know, my, my new synthwave mix is coming out next week, <laughs> completely composed on Rhodey. Oh, just ignore all of the diamonds as far as the eye yeah. can see. We're looking for that chicken. This cave's made entirely of crystal. <laughs> Uh, oh man! I think the studio uh, may have been made entirely of crystal. Walter White's <laughs> fantasy here. You have touched Wait, this the is turning into dark in crystal now. That is a crossover I am both very interested in seeing and not interested <laughs> at all in seeing. U.S. government, hand it over. Come here and get it. Hey, let's shine the spotlight on the hero. Okay, admittedly, that was that was some good problem solving there. That was a good one, Byron. I've always been quick on my feet. Random obscure observation here. This is like the exact plot line right now of the first issue of Fantastic Four when the mole man <laughs> meets them. <laughs> you know, I like will he pulls that exact thing on <laughs> I will say second or third time watching this, there's actually, like, I gotta say animation-wise, there's a couple frames in here here and there where I'm like, oh, that actually looks kind of nice. Yeah. You know, but, you know, and, but also, yeah, like as I said, my, my takeaway from the show is just that it can be so fascinating um, where oh, people choose was... where we should put all our put all of our effort into. Yeah, it's like uh, Masters of the Universe. Oh, th there's a reversed uh, background there. Uh, Masters of the Universe, where like some of the the figure animation is like clearly rotoscoped and beautiful, so they just reuse that 500 times. And then the other animation is like, well, let's just phone this in. It's Friday at three o'clock. Let's get out of here. I mean, comparing this, to, like, and it's, it's it's hard to harp on this so much compared to other things like, 
you know, like Captain M that just had like missing frames and like oh, yeah. scenes that are just like halfway done, make it to air. Yeah, you know, Captain M. Oh man, that show. <laughs> and then like there's the Captain and Ripoff series, um, Video Power. Oh, I didn't was, know about that one. Oh, it's like yeah, it's like Captain N, except for it's like a montage of, uh, I think it was a claim series. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like um, Narc, the guy from like Wizards and uh, Wizards and something, uh, <laughs> Quark, um, Bigfoot. So all, all the video game characters that people didn't know about. Yeah, like uh, Bigfoot the monster truck. Oh god. <laughs> it was. And it's now that his sweaty palm disease really starts to kick in. So it's the cars that really do everything in this show. Oh, absolutely. Like, people it, are just kind of along for the... Literally along for the ride. I'm, I'm just saying, like, at least Speed Racer drove the car completely. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like a like a Kit Knight Rider situation. Like, he, he did have to be a good... Like, there's not much reason for the kids to be here. in reverse. I'm not sure that's how that works. Yeah, um, I don't know if, like, edging the lawn is the best strategy here, but I guess it works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I guess from an animation standpoint, you know, if, if they're going to choose movement as, like, the one thing they're going to make sure looks decent, probably a better decision than most. Yeah. When it comes to this, like, the, and I mean, it's not like, you, and you can imagine it's not like they gave the show all the money in the world to, to make anyway. Like, so yeah, like, I do like to riff on these shows and have some fun every oh, now God, and then, but like, <laughs> well, there goes the, the shattered pelvis. is their main superpower here. We find the remaining four, and we'll be able to. <laughs> you can summon Captain. Pratt. I am inevitable. It's a job well done. Isn't that the A team's van? It might be. <laughs> They've stolen everything else already. Yeah, pretty much. Now that everything's settled, will you please Professor Cletus? One, two, three, four. I think that cat had six fingers. Me too. The opening in the cave was too small for a human. But the hieroglyphics showed that the ancient tribe trained birds to respond to music and check out the code that would open the door. It took me months to train that chicken to hear my flute tune and duplicate the action that would move that code. <laughs> How? <laughs> I'm glad this was finally explained to us. <laughs> oh yeah, because that's, that's what we've been waiting to hear this whole time. It's like the equivalent to that Harvey Birdman sketch where um, <laughs> where, where he's like, like having him like hit the coffee button without hitting the doomsday button. <laughs> Falcon would never betray me. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there There's we go. There's always some, like, random names in here that you'll be like, oh my god, they worked on this before going on to make some real art. Like, they... Like, I'll give them credit. Like, when they made the... the um. Uh, they got one of the the main uh, Ninja Turtles writers to work on the pilot for Battletoads, but even that wasn't <laughs> enough to save it. That seems like a betrayal. <laughs> yeah, it's like see David Wise's name in there. I'm like, dude, come on, you wrote like the. Yeah, they you even wrote... stole like Burger King's logo there. <laughs> awesome, I love it. All I need to right. see the 2021 <laughs> film remake of the reboot of. Starring Tom Cruise and, just, you know, uh, Emily Blunt. Oh, yeah. It's like coming up next on Pole Position Reloaded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> 